Hello, I'm Michael Spicer, and I want to talk to you about the evolution of influencers and what the hell they are, really. Influencers, these are the people on your social media feeds who convince you that you absolutely must put snail mucus on your face every night. Whether it be TikTok, Instagram, whatever it is, we're always bombarded and inundated by sponsored content. By the way, this video is sponsored by Jimmy's Lamp and Plant Emporium. If you want to start your own YouTube channel and make virtually no sense at all every single week, you know where to come to. But how did we get here? How did the internet go from a fun place to play low stakes online poker to a lucrative den of capitalism that makes pre-teens richer than God? Let's travel back to a faraway time when adverts were on a thing called television. And even before that, a much more mysterious place called magazines. The concept of influencing has pretty much always existed in the form of public figures that we've admired and aspired to emulate from royalty to celebrities to happy-looking families in serial commercials. There are many examples of people that we would have considered to be influencers before the days of social media. For instance, hosts of infomercials. This was back when staying up late meant watching endless infomercials on late night TV rather than scrolling through TikTok as we do now. These charming and eccentric TV personalities would do their utmost to convince you that the thing that they were selling was something that you desperately needed but of course never did. Did you really need that absorbent plastic washcloth? Not really. A kitchen towel would have been more than adequate. But how could you say no to this guy? Do you need a hard-boiled egg? Do you need one made in a weird, unnecessary way? Of course you do. These infomercials convinced you that it was a good idea, even though, for the most part, they were just bits of plastic. Here's another example. Before the Kardashians, there was the royal family. Princess Diana was so influential, there was a massive spike in boys named William in the US and the UK. William. And a recent survey has shown that most Williams are completely insufferable, so thank you, Princess Di, for that. One could even argue that religious figures were the original influencers. Jesus would get so many brand deals if he were around now just because of his uh, uh, follower count. Of course, everyone would claim that his walking on water was just uh, some sort of deep fake. The Pope even tweeted himself that Mary was the original influencer. That would explain why Jesus had so many followers, perhaps, because he was the first Nepo baby. And of course, like any true influencer, when it comes round to his birthday, we all celebrate by doing our own unboxing. Thank you for seeing me, Your Holiness. What do you want, a mould? Well, as your social media advisor, I've been thinking about ways you could raise your profile. What do you mean, raise my profile? I'm the Pope! Yes, but it doesn't matter how successful you are, there's always room to increase your reach. So I've come up with ways we could increase your social media presence. I, I don't even know what that means. Do you remember that picture of you that went viral because you were wearing a big, bright, white puffer jacket? Yes! Everyone thought it was real, but it was just a stupid AI image. Right, but, but it was very popular, wasn't it? So my thinking is, why don't we get you in one of those jackets for real? Excuse me? Give your followers what they want, Your Holiness. You know, let's do a photo shoot in the jacket. You could do some poses. You know, social media would be absolutely overwhelmed. The internet might break down. I am the head of the Catholic Church, not Kylie Jenner. Forget it. I must say, you're, you're the hardest celebrity that I've had to do PR for. Look, just get out, all right? I've got 1.3 billion Catholics to keep happy. See, that's why I think you should do that paid promotion for Muller Yogurts. For... Give it some thought. They're offering a lifetime supply of banana flavour with chocolate flakes. Push off. Not very Christian. It is Christian that you, yeah. Today, social media influencers are primarily active on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. <laughs> Now we can be just as easily convinced to part with our hard-earned cash on a product that's been pushed by a 14-year-old in Nebraska as we are by an A-list movie star. Not many of those, anyway. I mean, there aren't, are there? There's like Margot Robbie, Emma Stone, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling. The widespread access to social media has basically leveled the playing field for influencing, making it so that anyone with an iPhone and a dream can achieve success in the exciting field of trying on leggings and slowly eating a burrito. It's inspiring, really. However, the saturated social media landscape has also turned the business of influencing from something that a, a random mom in a Wookiee mask can accidentally stumble into, into a purposeful business path that creators work hard to pursue. 
In fact, a poll showed that when asked what they wanted to be when they grew up, half of Gen Z said they wanted to become an influencer or an online celebrity of some sort. But do they all have the talent required to look directly into the camera and say, hey guys, it's harder than it looks. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Here are two stereotypes of Instagram influencers. Celebrities posting about products they definitely don't use. Of course, celebrities will always be influential online, whether they're actors, singers, or reality TV stars desperately clinging on to some kind of relevancy. But please don't insult our intelligence by saying that you stay fit by taking a single gummy vitamin a day. I'm glad you got paid $15,000 to post a picture of yourself pretending to put a vitamin in your mouth, but perhaps have something in the fine print about how a personal chef, um, a fitness trainer, and extensive plastic surgery also played a small role in your fitness journey, yeah? Number two, travel influencers. These Instagrammers have somehow managed to carve an entire career out of traveling to exotic destinations and making us feel bad about how we'll never be able to do what they're doing anyway. Although, to be honest, if going to that place means meeting them, I'd rather stay at home. Mmm, that all-inclusive resort looks absolutely amazing. Thanks for all the info. I'll just be over here eating from a can of beans because my rent has gone up again. And I'll, I'll, I'll pretend it's a pina colada. Here are stereotypes of TikTok influencers. Dancing teens who all seem to sort of live in the same house with each other. I mean, the, these people are all billionaires by now. I can't understand why they're not in separate housing. They've got to be violating child labour law somehow. I... Number two, people who are just eating. The mukbang video format is very, very popular on TikTok and just shows people slowly, sloppily eating large plates of food for people's pleasure, I guess. I, 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 I don't know. Sometimes they review the food, other times they just slurp it. This is where I prefer celebrities pretending to eat vitamins, to be honest, because I would prefer that than watching you in your car eating a chicken wing. Number three, daily routines. These are TikTokers who post highly curated days in the life videos, where they all exclusively wake up at the crack of dawn, make their beds, go for a run, drink some hot lemon water, journal their intentions, meditate, file their annual tax returns, and write the next great American novel all before 7 a.m. These videos are actually so inspirational because they've inspired me to delete TikTok. Hi guys, here's my morning routine. I get up, get dressed, come down the stairs, go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my phone, then I come back down the stairs, uh, then I go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my phone charger, then I come back down the stairs, and then I go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my AirPods, Uh, then I come back down the stairs, go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my AirPods charger, then I come back down the stairs, then I go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my laptop, then I come back down the stairs, then I go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my laptop charger, then I come back down the stairs, then I go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my Apple Watch, then I come back down the stairs, then I go into the kitchen, then I go back up the stairs because I forgot my Apple Watch charger, then I come back down the stairs, then I go into the kitchen, then I stand in the centre of the kitchen for seven hours contemplating the loss of human identity in relation to technology. Then I go back upstairs to bed. Then I come back down the stairs because I forgot my phone. Then I go back up the stairs to bed. Then I come back down the stairs because I forgot my phone charger. Here are three stereotypes of YouTube influencers. Number one, unboxing. What is so fascinating about watching people unboxing things? If I wanted to watch someone else open a package that was not for me, I'd go to my neighbour's house and peer through the window on Christmas morning. And they've repeatedly told me they don't want me doing that. Number two, playing video games. One massively popular type of video on YouTube and Twitch is to just watch gamers playing games in real time. If you had told the 12 year old version of me that one day it would become a valid career option to play World of Warcraft all day, I'd have said to you, who are you and what are you doing here? Get back to your own time before the space time continuum implodes on itself. (sighs) Also cool. Number three, elaborate pranks. Of course, we cannot forget those YouTubers with millions and millions and millions of followers who concoct elaborate pranks and social experiments in the vein of a Saw movie to make some sort of comment about society? I don't know. Are all these pranks totally faked and staged? Yes, they are. Does that mean that they're not really pranks at all? Yes, it does. Does it mean they'll stop doing them? No. 
The most popular creator in this category is of course Mr. Beast. I think his most recent prank on his YouTube channel was how I managed to make anyone think that I was good. So what about influencers in the future? Influencing as a career has come a very long way, but what does the future hold? Well, like many careers, these jobs are already being replaced by AI. Companies and individuals are creating AI accounts and posing as influencers, promoting their products at a much lower cost because they don't have to employ any humans, and they also have total creative control. AI technology has already got off to a, a fairly creepy start, with celebrities like Kendall Jenner giving their likeness and their voice to AI chatbots so that people can talk to her in a, in a completely um, non-creepy, non-pervy, healthy way. Companies will do anything to save a buck. So if using AI influencers to promote their products is going to be cheaper, then eventually we'll be living in a world whereby you access TikTok and the only dance craze going on there is the robot. But it might not catch on. People want authenticity in their pandering sponsored content. A collection of pixels and code can't convincingly pretend to us that a, a skincare product changed their life. Not in the same way that a, a real person can, unless, the AI is convincing enough to look like a real person, in which case we're all doomed, doomed. So let's look at AI influencers. I wish we didn't, but let's look at them. Example one, Lil Miquela. Lil Miquela is an AI robot who lives in LA, of course. So far she's done ads for brands such as BMW, Prada, Calvin Klein, and Alexander McQueen. She was created by a startup, of course, and she has 3 million followers on Instagram and 3.6 million followers on TikTok. I mean, I just, I'm not, not sure why I'm, why I'm bothering. She recently posted that she was having an existential crisis because she didn't age. She then decided that she wanted to start aging and has now been reprogrammed from 19 to 20 years old. This is all real things that are happening. I understand that crisis that she's having, but I would advise her to stop at 20. It really just doesn't get any better. Example number two, Ima Tokyo. Ima is a virtual model from Japan who has done adverts for Adidas, Burberry, Coach, and Ikea. If she could actually build the furniture from Ikea, that, that I, I'd, be, I'd be down with that. Although you'd probably just get into a fight over a missing screw and ruin everything. So will influencers live forever? The idea of an influencer will always be around in some capacity. It's only human nature to be influenced by people who seem attractive, happy, stylish, fit. We enjoy watching them and we want the things that they have, which is why we'll go out and buy a BMW in the hope that we'll too become a pink haired, cute little robot. Influencing has always and will continue to adapt to technology and whatever else medium that we happen to be consuming at the time. Whether AI will fully immerse itself into this world remains to be seen, but it is definitely a possibility. AI bots may become more integrated into the world of influencing, but that's no different to an animated mascot on a TV commercial. Those meerkats and charming bears, they're not going to steal our jobs, are they? And AI bots probably won't either. People will always want to hear from an authentic voice, from real human beings telling them what they should be buying because it's written down in a script. So whether you like it or not, influencers will live forever. And I don't just mean as a 20 year old AI robot. Some people think that the notion of just content farms producing daily YouTube videos without any human input, it's just solid AI, is a very disconcerting development. But I say, if it means less work for me, then yeah, let's, let's do it. So in conclusion. If you're an influencer in a world where the cost of living is rising and salaries are too small to catch up with it, then consider yourself an enemy of the people and a tool of capitalism. In other news, Comedian Michael Spicer passed away today at the age of 47. He said in a statement today, I've just watched a YouTube video of badly sliding pictures of me with an AI voice saying I died, so I must be dead. I want to thank all my subscribers for watching and don't forget to smash that like button you guys. It's the least you can do what with me being dead now. Goodbye.